Hello, my dear lovely students. Once again, a very warm welcome to this summary series. I know desperately you guys were waiting for this session, your own favorite chapter, which is biotechnology. Biotechnology principle and processes chapter, which I'll be dealing today in a very short form, in a crisp form. We will be dealing with each and every topic given in your NCRT. So all the very best. Let's start this session. And yes, guys, simultaneously start making notes. If you haven't made notes, start making your notes also. Okay. Now let's start the today's session. So today, you know, in biotechnology, there are two chapter: biotechnology principle and processes. And second, we have is a biotechnology application. Today, only a chapter which I am dealing is the biotechnology principle and processes. Okay. Now, just have a look at this uh, uh, this thing. Now, to talk about the biotechnology, so what is a biotechnology? Biotechnology means integration of a natural science. What we are doing is we are integrating the natural science parts, organism thereof, and we are using some molecular analog for getting a particular product. See, it is actually we are. in a very simple language i can say i am modifying the genotype of an organism and i am using that organism as a machine so that a desired product can be produced now let's have a look look at this definition this is an actual definition right european federation of biotechnology has given this definition so this definition you have to remember as such integration of natural science natural science means microorganisms their physiology their anatomy whatever so that natural science and organism organism cells cells sometime the parts their molecular analogs for example the dna rna proteins etc for products and services for our products for the things which we want and for their some for our services clear now principles of biotechnology biotechnology the two main parts are there first is the genetic engineering so if i am saying i am using one organism and i am modifying that organism for my own need what will i do the first thing is i will modify the genotype of that organism suppose i have a cell and i want that cell to become a factory of a particular product so firstly i have to modify that organism so that i can call that organism as a factory so suppose i have a cell and i want that cell should produce insulin so first i have to introduce a insulin gene in that similarly some modification whenever i am doing related to the genotype genes etc some addition some deletion if it is happening this is termed as genetic engineering right we are inserting we are deleting this term as genetic engineering now next is a bioprocess engineering bioprocess engineering suppose i have created some cells four to five cells i have created with the help of a genetic engineering i have modified their genome now what i am saying is i want product should be formed yes those cells they will be able to form the product but the amount of product which will be formed by two to three cell will be very less but you know human needs they are never ending so we want the products in a bulk amount for that the bio process engineering is required so bio process engineering is a process by which we culture these cells we extract product from them we purify them we pack it and then we release that in the market so that comes under the bio process engineering hope these two points are clear now let's talk about the construction of the first recombinant dna first let's come to this topic what is a recombinant dna recombinant dna re re means again combinant means new combination of the dna we have created now when i'm saying i have a antibiotic resistance gene antibiotic r gene i have introduced that antibiotic resistance gene in a plasmid of a salmonella typhimurium so what is a plasmid plasmid is a extra chromosomal dna and this extra chromosomal dna provides extra property right in a bacteria normal uh, dna normal bacterial chromosome is present but the plasmid is also present and plas plasmid provides some extra properties so this is a plasmid of the salmonella typhimurium so what i have used but with the help of the genetic engineering i have introduced this antibiotic resistance gene into the plasmids of the salmonella typhimurium i have introduced it i will be using various uh, products i will be using various tools so yes 
Now this is created. You can see the white is being inserted. What we have is a recombinant plasmid. Now this I am going to insert into a cell. See now the cell, the already the bacterial chromosome is there. Now this cell, this uh, plasmid was introduced, and the recombinant plasmid was introduced. This was very firstly done in 1972 by Stanley Cohen and Herbert Boyer. Very important question. This has been asked. That here the antibiotic resistant gene was used. The plasmid was the Salmonella typhimia. Clear? Is this point clear? Now, what is actually a process? If you go deep into the process, here first thing is we take DNA, the foreign DNA. We take a vector or a plasmid. The vector are the vehicle which carries the DNA. We will use the ligase first. We will cut this uh, vector. What we will do is we will insert this foreign DNA, right? We will use a fivicol that is a ligase. See, now we will get the recombinant DNA molecule and then we will get the cells. Then we are going to introduce into the cell. Introduction of this foreign DNA into a cell will be termed as a transformation. It will be termed as a transformation. Now, that what we are going to do is we are going to culture these cells. What we will get is clone of the host cell. We will get lots of host cells. So this is a basic idea behind the biotechnology. Who started this activity? This was started by the Stanley Cohen and the Herbert Boyer in 1972. This is the basic idea behind the biotechnology. Done. So why we are doing this? For our own benefit. Right. So this definition should be very much clear to you. Now, where are when we talk about the tools of recombinant DNA technology, tools, that means for inserting a DNA, for cutting a DNA, we require certain tools. So let's talk about those tools one by one. Now here guys, the very first tool which is mentioned in your books is your restriction enzyme. Restriction enzyme. Restriction enzymes are the restriction endonuclease. Now let's come back to this. Here you know we have a foreign DNA, right? And this is a specific gene which we have introduced. The specific gene which we have introduced. But when we talk about a gene, a gene is present in a whole DNA. And gene is a sequence. Gene is actually a, just a sequence of a nucleotide. Right? So from a whole DNA, if you have to take out a segment of a DNA, for that I need some scissors. These scissors are termed as restriction endonucleases. Come back to this. These scissors, they are termed as restriction enzymes or restriction endonuclease. Now, these restriction endonuclease, very important feature is they recognize a specific DNA sequence, which is a palindromic sequence. They require a palindromic sequence and they always attack on a polyndromic sequence. And that palindromic sequence is, guys, for example, madam, for example, in a normal, uh, say, it is a madam. So, madam is, if I read this madam from this side or from this side, the alphabets, they are same. M, A, D. Then from that side also M, A, D, A, M. Everything is same. These are the palindromic sequence. Now this palindromic sequence here, one more palindromic sequence is written. That is G, A, T, T, C. Okay, whatever I am showing you, just guys focus on this. G, A, T, T, C, C, right? If I talk about because it's a DNA. So here, over here in the next strand, there will be C, T, D, A, A, G. Now, Look at this sequence. So this sequence will be termed as a palindromic sequence. D A A G A A. Amazing? Yes. Now these restriction enzymes they can recognize a palindromic sequence. That means if you read it from three prime to five prime direction or from five prime to three prime direction, we will get a similar uh, sequence. Done. What are these A A G G T C? These are the nucleotides only. You remember? So these are the nucleotides only. So G A guanine, adenine, etc. So what do they do is, they are they recognize the palindromic sequence. Another important feature is, they always cut double standard DNA. They will always cut a double standard DNA. Where will they cut? The double standard DNA. Right? <coughs> Where do they actually cut? They cut sugar phosphate backbone. Very important question, one marker. Where do they cut? They cut the sugar phosphate backbone. Now they are also termed as a molecular because they are use, using this in the molecular biology for cutting a DNA so that they are named as molecular scissors. Now, they produce overhanging sticky ends which enhance the act of DNA liking. Now, <coughs> let's come to this. Yes. This is a DNA sequence, right? Now, whenever these enzymes, they act, they, these enzymes works like this. 
on one strand it is going to cut over here on another strand it is going to cut over here so what we will get buddies is this isn't it what we will get is this okay now i have told you about the palindromic sequence a t t c now whenever restriction enzyme comes restriction enzyme always cut here it comes and it will cut over here p a a t this is one example like this there are numerous examples in your um, you know bio world so th this is how it will cut so on the one strand there will be g on the another stand there will be a you can't say here there is a cut on another stand there will be this thing a t t c now these are single standard if you look at this these are the single standard sequences now these are single standard dna they can look for their mate yes so now the dna ligase suppose i have to join something over here it's very easy to join because these are the overhanging sequence isn't it so if we can easily join something over here because these are the overhanging sequences so if i have to tell you now if this is a this is a consider this is a double stranded dna and if i cut this double stranded dna i will get two different strand clear two different strands i am getting this is a one strand and this is another strand i am getting to join these two where to join these two will become a tedious task for us but if i'll get a a sequence something like this they will easily go and they will easily go and bind see the binding is easily possible because of overhanging sequences are there clear chalo now the next point is there are two type exonucleases and endonucleases exonucleases means suppose this is the dna right if they cut from the end when they cut from end they are exonucleases but when i am saying they cut in between in between this is a cut now this strand will be separated now this will be termed as endonuclease now this and this enzyme will be termed as endonuclease here the example is given as hind2 this is the first restriction endonuclease which was isolated done now only one enzyme is mentioned like this there are lots of enzyme like sma1 pbu1 pst1 bam h1 hind3 hind2 so many enzymes are so many restriction enzymes are there but here the first restriction enzyme is hind2 mentioned in the ncert second restriction enzyme i'm not saying the second seek second number of restriction enzyme second enzyme which is mentioned in the ncert that is a eco r1 so why this complex name because here e means escherichia CO means coli, that is a species name. Then R is the strain, R Y is the strain from which is it, it is isolated. One is a sequence, sequence of isolation. That this is a sequence from uh, in which it is being isolated from the strain. One. Now it can recognize each and every uh, nucleo, uh, each and every uh, you know restriction enzymes we have. They have a specific sequence, or they recognize a specific sequence. here the sequence which we have seen the sequence is recognized by the eco r1 right are you getting my point yes so what do they produce overhanging sequences you want to if you want to have a look i can give you a quick look now this is the sequence g a a t t -C. this is another strand on this strand there will be c t t a a right now what will eco r1 come do eco r1 body is c eco r1 will come and eco r1 will attack over here which bond does it attack sugar phosphate backbone right so what we will get is here what we will get is here g right and on another stand we have a c t t a a now on the another stand we will get a a t t c. here we will get only rest other nucleotides are also there which i have mentioned with a straight line here also the nucleotide will be present because these are the recognizing sequence so i'm only talking about these recognizing sequence 
Now, if I keep this thing in the mixture, they can easily recognize and they can easily bind to their mate. How? Because here will be specific binding T T A A. So they will be looking for something which is having A A T T as an overhanging sequence. Now, here the ligase will function in a better way. Ligase, which is a, which is what? Ligase is a, you know, very quick. So I have to uh, find a gene, which one I will be joining a gene which is having a A A and G, uh, A and T T sequence so that, that they can come in, they can easily bind. That is the use of a sticky ends. Moving on to the second thing which we require when we talk about a cloning vector. Cloning vector, va cloning means which helps in the making the copy. Vectors are the vehicles, another name is vector vehicle. So what does a vector do? Vector carries a DNA and transfer to a desired cell. Vector is a vehicle which will carry a DNA which will transfer to the desired cell. Here, what are these? What are the different features? Features are the cloning site should be there. Cloning site means this is a place where the DNA needs to be right? Now, suppose cloning site, that means it's a bus. It's a bus. And in this bus, some seeds should be there on which our passenger, they will come and they will sit. Second is origin of replication. So, there should be an origin of replication. Because this is how, I'll give you one example. This is how are uh, one of the plasmid look like right they should have a ori sequence suppose i have inserted a gene over here right i have inserted a gene over here now this gene will make a copy only when this plasmid will make a copy right so they should have a origin of replication and normally we try that gene should be inserted near ori sequence we always try this now next is selectable marker see Whenever we want to travel somewhere, we take a bus, we take book, a cab, we take a Ola, Uber, etc. But and that is quite visible. That if you are sitting in the bus, quite visible. If you are not sitting in the bus, it is quite visible. But how will we get to know whether uh, gene has been inserted or not? Because gene is very minute thing. Plasmid is also very minute thing. We want to know whether the, we have inserted that or not. That itself is a big issue. For that certain selectable markers are required. This I will explain you how. If you look at this particular plasmid, this plasmid was artificially synthesized by the Bolivar Rodriguez. So the name is PBR. This is artificially synthesized plasmid. Plasmid is an example of a vector. Plasmid of Bolivar Rodriguez 322. Very important. Now this diagram you should know. Here you will see guys, here, ORI sequence is there which is the origin of replication second point, right? Now there should be cloning sites. So what do I mean by cloning site? Cloning site means, see, PST, PVU, Eco R1, CLA, HIND, BAM and SAL. What are these? These are the restriction site. So if I will use a PST1 enzyme, PST1 enzyme, so the cut will happen over here right and our dna will be inserted over here gene will be inserted if i'll use pvu1 the cut will happen over here the insertion will be here the eco r1 the insertion will be here cla insertion will be here hind2 insertion hind3 insertion will be here bam actually insertion will be here sal1 insertion will be here so this is how the whole structure look like clear so these are the different cloning sites now suppose I want a I want a particular gene uh, product copies. Let's say let's take an example of an insulin gene uh, insulin product. So for that, what will I do? I will have to take out the insulin gene. And today we know the sequence of the DNA, right? We know the sequence of an insulin gene. Now, if you will read the insulin gene sequence, you will see that some palindromic sequences they are present on the right side of an insulin gene. Some are present on the left side of the insulin gene, some palindromic sequence. Those palindromic sequences, whatever we will find them, those palindromic sequences, we have to find out the restriction enzyme. Right? Suppose these the sites which we have seen, these are the restriction sites of the BAM H1. BAM H1. So we will use the BAM H1. So from the whole genome, BAM H1 will come and they, they are going to bind near the insulin gene. They will cut the insulin gene. We will get the insulin gene. Same enzyme BAMH1 use, we will use over here. 
it will cut over here now the dna will be inserted over here so these are the cloning sites <coughs> and the selectable now let's talk about the selectable marker now see, see this one which we have inserted which we have isolated is uh, which we have designed in this pbr322 and if you look at the pbr322 here some ampicillin resistant genes are present which is shown in the pink here the tetracycline resistant gene is present which is also shown in the pink now suppose bam h1 i am using what will happen the in uh, the tetracycline resistance will be gone because now this gene is hindered so that means our recombinant plasmid new combination of plasmid will no longer be tetracycline resistant but if we are using pst1 right so what will happen the ampicillin resistance will be done will be gone that means our transformant will not be ampicillin resistant done clear this point is clear this is super 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 important diagram everyone try making this diagram 100 times 1000 times i don't think like that that's not feasible at least 5 to 6 times you should know exact location you should know this is a pst preview like Oof. so what is a vector vector is a dna se segment that replicate independent of the chromosome and can be transferred transferred between the host now what is a vector vector is a vehicle which carries the dna vehicle so what is this vehicle vehicles are basically the dna segments only so these dna segments they take up the foreign dna right they have a capacity to replicate they have a capacity to go to the host cell they will insert themselves into the host cell and they will make a copy of themselves that's it when they will make a copy of themselves in the host cell so that means it is quite evident now the dna which we want that will also form a copy if that will also form a copy so that means our problem is sorted this is what we were looking for right done of this topic is that now how can we select the transformants and the non transformants how can we select whether a dna has been inserted or not for that another method one you know that is whenever we insert a gene this particular resistance will be done 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 now the second thing is insertional inactivation insertional inactivation is if you look at this plasmid right in this plasmid there is a gene of lac z lac z codes for beta galactosidase and this beta galactosidase produce a chromogenic substrate like they produce a color right it produce a blue colony it gives a blue color whenever they react with a chromogenic substrate it gives a blue color right this is a lac z gene is present this forms an enzyme beta galactosidase whenever you will add chromogenic substrate blue color is produced now suppose i have inserted a gene in the lac z area lac z is disrupted lac z is affected if lac z guys is affected that means beta galactosidase is not there if beta galactosidase is not there irrespective you will add oh, thousands of chromogenic substrate you will not get color now see insert within the lac z there will be white colony no color because beta galactosidase is dun 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 now if the insert is outside the lac z so there will be blue colony because beta galactosidase formation will occur next is no insert then again is done everyone clear these points hope they are clear so these are the cloning vector are these only cloning vector no there are other cloning vectors also for example back is there the yak is there um, um you know the retroviruses are there for example the ti plasmids are there so all these are the uh, your cloning vectors now next is competent host for transformation in host dna now another points guys listen very 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 carefully <coughs> so whenever i am saying competent host for the transformation in the host dna when we want that particular plasmid should enter into the cell how is it possible how can i do that so that insertion is possible by the certain treatment first is the calcium chloride treatment and the heat shock treatment calcium chloride suppose suppose i have a i have a petri plate and in that cells are present i have added transformed plasmid into and i want plasmid they should enter in 
how will the plasmid uh, how will the plasmid enter into the possible right because dna itself uh look at the uh, structure of a dna dna is having phosphate they are having the nucleotides etc they are present so they cannot directly insert into the cell for the insertion we have we need certain three first is a calcium chloride treat second is a heat shock treat calcium chloride and a heat shock treat they produce transient pores in the host because of the production of a transient uh, ho holes in the host cell the dna they can e easily insert first by the treatment the calcium chloride and second heat shock me first cooling it then 42 degree celsius then again this will in the dna other ways are also there the micro will take a plasmid dna in the injection micro injection will insert second is a biologic gun we will use a gun here we will use some uh, you know uh, bullets and that bullet is made up of gold and tungsten we will coat the bullets with the recombinant plasmid want to that's it biologic biologic gene there is basic plants Now next one is a disharmed pathogen like vector. Otherwise, some vectors can be used. For example, for example, if I talk about the plants, we normally use Ki plasmid. What do we use? Ti, and this Ti plasmid is extracted from Agrobacterium. agrobacterium agrobacterium tumor it causes crown gall disease in the plants when scientists they were re studying this what to know that this disease occur whenever there is infection by the agrobacterium agrobacterium tumor third their vector that is the ti plasmid cells of the plants due to which the plant cell type is type is modified so they will produce a tumor like of right there will be proliferation cell there will be tumor like thing for me scientists they were thinking of scientists they could took advantage of this field. they realized if they can the plasmid can insert themselves into the plus plant cell why can't we use them as a vector let's modify the ti plasmid let's make them this is written here disharmed they disharmed it they used it as a vector and this is now you plant for the transformation second for the animals to transformation occur what do we use is the retrovirus retrovirus has a capacity to introduce their gene to the animal cell retrovirus one example is the hiv when we disharm this retrovirus now that means that means that uh, retrovirus is not carrying any disease anymore that can be if i insert my gene of interest into this vector they can easily transfer that into the ant very easy right hello let's move on to the process of recombinant dna what is the process which we are going to follow the first process first step is the isolation the genetic isolation now for this what you will do now suppose you want to transform a e coli you want to add a nucle uh, add a nucleotide into add a sequence of nucleotide into a, a, a e coli what is this procedure the first thing is what we have to do is need a gene and for the gene isolation what do we want is the dna the dna is first guys this is a cell and in this cell there is a nucleus and in the nucleus the dna is present dna itself is 2.2 meter dna is but we want only a single strand of dna but first step we have is the extraction of the dna first what we will do is we will take out these cells we are going to make a chutney of it we are going to grind it we will make the centrifuge now here what will happen when we are making a when we are grinding it membranes of the cells are broken membranes of the cells are broken 
pain will be done, 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 done. Then we will add the lysozyme. Lysozyme will digest the bacteria. If you digest, if you're using a bacterial cell, if we want to extract the DNA, bacterial cell will use lysozyme. If you if we are using a plant cell, we will use a cellulose. If we are using a fungus, we'll use a chitinase. If we are using the ribonuclein for the digestion of RNA, we'll use the protein for the digestion of because we don't want RNA and protein. What do we want? We want to lay DNA. So we will digest everything. Then what we will add? We will add we'll do the ethanol. We'll add ethanol. We will get clear strands of the DNA. And on this channel, if you'll go to the short section, there I have made a video of a banana DNA. So clear strands, they are visible, clear DNA strands, and that you can wrap around a glass rod spooling. Now, <coughs> next thing is we will get a 2.2 meter DNA. Now, 2.2 meter, we are going to cut this at a specific. And for this cutting, what do we require? Scissors, and scissors are the restrictions. Picture endonuclear. Only we use endonuclear, exonuclear. Next is isolation separation of DNA. Now, <coughs> once we are doing the restriction endonuclease, we will get lots of fragments. But we know the insulin gene of this particular weight. So what we are going to do? We are going to isolate and separate the DNA. How it is possible? This can be done by the gel electro. Gel electro. Gel electrophoresis is that method by which we can easily isolate and separate the DNA. Right? Here we use agarose gel. We prepare a gel. We load our sample. We'll run electricity. The segments, they will be separated on the basis of their size and charge. Size means those uh, size, they will be separated. So those which are of smaller size, they will go farther from the origin, farther from the base uh, uh, where they were initially poured. And with the help of a ladder, we can easily determine, okay, this is the sequence actually looking. Here, for the gel electrophoresis, for looking at the strands, we need a dye. And here the dye which is used is ethidium bromide. Ethidium. And if we look at the strand after staining with the ethidium bromide under the UV radiation, we get orange color strands. Now, let's move on to the amplification. Now guys, we got a strand of the DNA. We want to amplify this. How can we amplify? We can amplify this with a PCR. What is a PCR? PCR is a polymeric. Polymerase. Polymerase chain. Now this polymerase chain reaction, very important guys. This can be asked in a marker have to explain all the steps related to the polymerase chain reaction and that everything we have discussed in the session these are uh, summary series so i'm giving you everything uh, in a very short and the crisp way to talk about the polymerase chain reaction here we will use a machine right and that machine the three steps are involved first step is a denaturation denaturation annealing and extend. These are the three steps which machine to denaturation. Now, first thing is these are different strands. So these are the two strands of the DNA. In the denaturation, both these strands they will be separated. This is a denaturation. Second step is the annealing. What is this annealing? Some primer we are going to add. And these primer they will add, they will they will be added over here. They will go and they will bind over here. Now the next step here is these are the strands, right? We have added, we have already added. These are the oligonucleotide primers we have added. 
Now we will add what? We will add the enzyme that is a DNA polymerase which you have studied in the molecular basis of inheritance chapter. Now these polymerase they will extend the chain. These polymerase they will extend the chain. They will keep on adding the nucleotide opposite to that of the original strand. So initially I was having only a single strand. With a three step we will get two different st strands. Right, these are the different steps. First step number one is a denaturation. Second step over here is the annealing. And the third step is the extinction. Temperature requirement for each and every strand is, uh, is different. For denaturation, temperature uh, which is required is around around 90 degrees Celsius and yes it depends on the CG content also. If CG content is more in the DNA so that means the tr tr uh, double bond is there, uh, sorry triple bond is there. If this triple bond is there so if we have to separate it, separation will become so difficult. We have to increase the temperature. On an average temperature is given as 92 degrees Celsius for annealing it is around 55 degrees Celsius. For extension it is around 72 degrees Celsius given in the your NCI. Right? So what are the different uh, things which you require? For this, you require an original DNA strand. Original DNA strand whose copies you want to prepare. You will require here some DNTP, some oligonucleotide, some DNTP, some nucleotides they are required. Definitely we will add that also in the machine. We will add some oligonucleotide primer. oligonucleotide primer we will require an enzyme also here the temperature in the denaturation step goes to 92 degrees celsius temperature i for that we require the enzyme which are thermos thermostable polymerase thermostable polymerase the name is stark polymerase Stark polymerase. Stark polymerase. Right? These are the things which are actually required. <coughs> Let's move on to the next step. Now, what you are going to do is you are going to ligate the fragment and load to the vector. Now, we have a DNA available with us. We have amplified that DNA also. We have made a millions of copies of that DNA also. We are going to insert that into the vector. Now, this RDNA recombinant DNA, we have to insert that into the host cell. For the insertion of the host cell, we will use the calcium chloride method. We will, we can use the heat shock method. We can use anything. Anything can be used, right? The next one is uh, obtaining the foreign gene product. Ultimately, we have to obtain the foreign gene. And for the obtaining the foreign, uh, the, this gene product, what do we require is these bioprocessors. Right. What do we require is this bioreactor, biofermenter. Bio. See, transformation we did only in few cells. We have inserted the cell into few cells, but we want multiple copies of those cells. How is it possible? Because now we are going to culture our recombinant cell, and this culturing we require the bioreactor. Bioreactor is of two types, given in the NCRT. Shared tank bioreactor. Third tank bioreactor and the second one is the sparged tank bioreactor. Sparged tank bioreactor. Third tank bioreactors are those reactors where there is a continuous stirring. Right? Here some foam breakers are present here. Here are some uh, impellers, basically some flat these are the flat blade impellers are present which keeps on mixing the oxygen, which keeps on mixing oxygen, that there should be more and more growth. It is attached to a motor and there is a machine. How they look like? Here everything is being maintained. It, it controls the pH also. Steam is also used for the sterilization. So that because if we add food also in this, chances that other bacteria, they can also grow, but we want only specific cell to grow. So we have to use steam for the sterilization first and then we have to insert our cells. Now next is a sterile air. This is how the sterile air also passes into this. 
right for the continuous aeration to occur so here it is like a incubator where a particular specific conditions with the food is provided to a host cell so that these host cells let's say e coli they divide and once these e coli will divide the plasmid will also divide if plasmid will also divide so that means our gene is also dividing if our genes are dividing so that means their translation is also happening and our product is also being formed not the only way by which we culture uh, uh, these e coli or this is one example i have given we have sparge tank bioreactor also both these diagram you should draw in your books now here you will see the surface area is more increased surface area for the oxygen transfer and this is how it look like right so it keeps on rotating now whenever there is a bubble formation so that means the surface area is more more surface area more oxygen it uh, more gases uh, it can accommodate Yeah, so these are the two different type of the bioreactor. They can thousands of liters of the substances. They uh, they can um, accommodate at one time. So for huge culturing to occur, we use we always use bioreactor. Now once our cells are ready, we will take out our cells and then we will send that into the bioprocessing unit. Further, we'll send that into the bioprocessing unit. and in the bioprocessing unit there will be filtration of the cell there will be another process like centrifugation chromatography etc and ultimately by these methods we will get desired product we'll get the desired these desired product will be tested right this will be a tested in various organisms just to check whether anyone is facing any allergic issues or not then if everything is fine if everything is tested okay we will pack it and we will distribute in the market done so these are the steps let's do a quick revision we have talked about the definition of the biotechnology uh, then genetic engineering and the bioprocessing when we were just modifying the dna it's a genetic engineering now next is a bioprocessing this is how a bioprocessing these are the functions of the bioprocessing unit both these bioreactors should be there in your mind then we talked about the first recombinant dna molecule first recombinant dna molecule was prepared by the stanley cohen and herbert boyer in 1972 so they use uh, you know they inserted antibody resistant gene terminal type of gene which they insert into the dna now to talk of when then we talked about the tools which are required so the tools mainly are your uh, resection endonucleases some vectors are also required then we talked about the actual process so in the actual process we talked about the isolation of dna cutting the dna into the by the resection endonuclease and the separation uh, identification and separation then we talked about the pcr then we insert inserted that uh, dna into the host cell then we after the insertion into the host cell we uh, have to uh, uh, extract the product we are looking so these are the two bioreactor again i'm saying diagrams are important from this chapter pcr is important that can be asked in the marks from this chapter the electrophoresis the diagram of electrophoresis are again a super important topic right hello guys so hope you like the session in a quick way we have done a quick revision of the whole chapter whatever is there whatever is important for your examination point of view See you in the next class till then have a nice day guys bye bye thank you so much